Hello, and welcome to Black Border Rants. I'm Tyler. And I'm John. And today we're going to talk about some good movies and... Some big, big news. And a little bit into the Grammy Awards, but not too much. And so, first off, and hopefully we'll start off like this in every show, we're going to be doing some hot sauce shots. And John, talk, talk about what we're going to do today. Uh, this one is Texas Pete. It says on the heat index, it's medium. It's a vinegary sweet sauce. So I'll let you pour us some shots. Um, so yeah, there's different kinds of hot sauce, and I'm a hot sauce kind of steer. I'm and not, but just because I didn't want anybody thinking I'm a wuss, so I'm just going to take this. All right, fill it up, fill it up. Come on. I'm and we're filling it on camera so that you can see it's going right from the bottle into the shot. All right. I say that's good. Now fill me up. All right. So, yeah, there's different kinds of hot sauce. We're going to be trying some different ones. Hopefully. Some different uh, flavors, some uh -oh. different styles. Oh, we're running out here. Oh, perfect. All right. There you go. So now we're going to try it out. To the show. Lahayam to life. Ah. Mmm. A little bit of a burn on the back of your tongue. Oh, yeah. Not too bad. Nice sweet flavor, like I said. What I like about it, though, is that vinegar taste. I'm a huge vinegar guy. I love eating pickles and all that good stuff. It's really good. really makes your mouth water. And I don't know. It's just a really good hot sauce. I mean, that's some good shit to put on your buffalo wings, you know? Yeah. Different than, a little bit different than a buffalo sauce. And, uh, <laughs> and a little bit, uh, Different than a Mexican sauce. Closer to uh, a Louisiana sauce. Yep. So, all and right. Good, and a good tip for hot sauce, by the way, I'm sorry to interrupt, is don't be drinking water like I do, because I guess they say it intensifies it. Oh, if you really want the pores. Yeah, you know, if you really want to get rid of that hot sauce taste in your mouth, drink, well, drink uh, milk. Milk, yeah. Anything fatty. Right. You can eat some butter. Yep. Right. Anything with that fat's going to do with ice cream right. and butter. So, now that we're all fired up. Let's get into the big old news. Uh, all right, let's talk about Spider Man finally coming back to the MCU. Go off. Oh my God! Who saw this coming? Well, lots of fans were having wet dreams that it was coming, but it actually came. Right. Spider Man, no in case you haven't, in case you <laughs> haven't heard, has been uh, there's been a deal made between Sony and Marvel Pictures to put Spider Man into an MCU movie. Right now, everybody's assuming that's going to be Civil War. And then, after that, in 2017, he's going to start in a rebooted Sony franchise. Now, this is a different Spider-Man than the one in the Amazing Spider-Man series. Andrew Garfield is out, and Marvel is going to help craft this little baby Spider-Man. And even when it goes back to Sony in 2017 for its solo picture... Marvel is still going to be involved in the development and the production. As it should have been. Well, it should be totally in-house house with Marvel, but they're going to keep it in the same universe now, even though the two different companies are making the movies, which is going to be amazing. Yep. We've all been waiting for it for years. Right. And we're finally going to get to see Captain America yep. with Spider-Man. Spider-Man with Iron Man. No longer exists on the cartoons. No, you no, you no longer have to watch uh, the... 90s version. Of or, the, the, or the Web Warriors, yeah. Ultimate Spider-Man Web Warriors. Don't have to watch that to see Iron Man and Spider-Man together anymore. Mm -hmm. And to be truth, to be honest, the reboots of the first two of them with Andrew Garfield, I hated them. I really, I really didn't think it went well. I think the lizard was was. I thought I was I was a fan of the character, but mm -hmm. the movies, nah, yeah, just no, uh, just no. One of the problems with the Amazing Spider-Man, in my opinion, besides the writing and the casting, was the CG because it looked cartoonish, and you know that used to be the thing because CG was coming along, but now we got good CG. 
And why do I want to go see a cartoon in a live action movie? That's what I hate when I go to the movies and the CG looks cartoonish because if I wanted to see a cartoon version of it, I would have watched the damn cartoon. We've been asking for a live action version. We don't want to see something that looks like a cartoon. We want something that looks real. So I really hate that. It gets on my nerves. I don't know what to you, but that hot sauce is kind of getting to me. Uh, it's kind of affecting my voice a little bit, but <clears throat> it's affecting my stomach. <laughs> but just don't spew. Yeah. Right. You gotta spew, <laughs> spew into, into this. this. But I think that's just kind of becoming one of the problems in a lot of in a lot of superhero movies, especially the CG, just because it's there. I don't know if it's cheaper to do it instead of. I I really don't know. I mean, <clears throat> like that's probably one of the problems with me too. Is it wasn't real enough for me. Too much CG going on, and mm -hmm. and that's how it is for a lot of these movies that are coming out, especially with Ninja Turtles. I really didn't like, especially one scene I really hated was the scene with uh, April O'Neil and Splinter, where they just literally looked like they just copy and pasted Mega Fox and just put it right, put it right there in front of Splinter. It looked horrible. Yeah. I really that was one of the things I didn't like about the movie, but. Maybe that's just the age I we're coming to, or it just depends what people have got working for you. All right, so we got Spider-Man in the MCU. Finally. So what's going on over at DC? Uh, DC, not too much. All we know is right now is with the uh, Superman and Batman type of thing. Otherwise, not too, not too much is being updated about that so far in the DC world. All right, and then we got... Sony and Marvel coming together. So Fox still has their franchises. The next one up, one of them is going to be Deadpool. Ooh. So, what are your thoughts on the Deadpool? I think it's going to be great. And what me and you just read before, it was with Ron Reynolds. And he was saying the difference between what Deadpool is going to be versus Green Lantern is the script. And as most people know that the script script already has been leaked, and along with that amazing test footage. Oh my god! Woo. Yes, and the difference, but the, not the difference, but the same thing between the Green Lantern and Deadpool is that I think Ryan Reynolds was perfect as Green Lantern, and I think he's perfect as Deadpool as far as Deadpool's personality. I mean, if you really want to get a sense of Deadpool, watch the movie Waiting where, you know, they're just a bunch of waiters. I think just with Ryan Reynolds acting in there, it's going to be a perfect example of what Deadpool can be. And also, I heard, too, this was a little old in the news, that the Deadpool is, and he's, that Ryan Reynolds, <coughs> excuse me, that fucking hot sauce, that Ryan Reynolds is really hoping that this movie stays rated R and will be rated R. And he says, also, within the script, is a lot of violence and a lot of sex Minus, not a lot of rock and roll. Sorry for the corny joke. I just had to put it in there. And like I said before, even with the script or not, I just I still think it's going to be good because also they said that the writers from Zombieland, which is one of my favorite movies, wrote the script. And so I just think it's going to be good from the get-go. I just, I just can't wait for it to come out. So uh, what do you? how do you think the meta of Deadpool is going to work where he's always commenting on what's going on he knows that he lives in a comic book. You, how do you think that'll work in a movie? I think it'll be kind of good because, I mean, we really don't have a lot of comic book movies. <laughs> a lot of comic book movies where there's, like, constant um, monologuing. And I think with Ryan Reynolds' ability to, like, not as an improv type of thing, but a kind of thing to kind of keep you entertained, and so that's why I think it's gonna be great. Based from the test test footage, I think it's gonna be. I think it's still gonna be entertaining. Uh, the meta thing is one reason why I think Deadpool could also work if the studio pussies out and drops it to a PG thirteen, because you can have Deadpool comment on that, that he's trying to swear and he's getting beeped, or where's the blood when he stabs somebody? You know, mm -hmm. he can comment right. on that and make a joke and right. actually make it work if the studio says, no, you can't go that far and make it R, I think you could still make it work just with the nature of Deadpool. Yeah. And you know what, though? Just for shits and giggles and try to give a quick synopsis, but what's the difference between the Deadpool and Wolverine Origins and this Deadpool? 
with especially where the time frame of Wolverine was and where this Deadpool is going to be. I uh, I have no idea how if it's going to be incorporated in some way into the X Men universe or a continuation of that Deadpool because what they did in that movie was they gave him random powers that Deadpool never had, like knife hands, and then the character known as the Merc with the Mouth. They assumed it was more fuck. So that really didn't work. And But then at the end of the movie, if you stayed uh, through the post-credits, at least in some... I think there were two different versions of the post-credits. But the one that I saw was Deadpool's head laying on the ground, and then he busts the stitches and his mouth opens up again. So he's the merc with the mouth again. But I don't know if it's going to be anywhere in that continuity because... If they're going to stay faithful to the character, he doesn't have laser eyes, he doesn't have knife hands like he did in that. Right. So, I don't know where that's going. Well, hopefully third time around, because it seems like, you know, with the Deadpool in there, yeah, I think he sold the show, but I think he kind of got screwed over by being mutated by his own father and being killed off. And with him being great as Green Lantern, but the movie just ended up just sucking major, major balls. And so hopefully third time around that Deadpool will be great and that Ron Reynolds would be the great actor that I think he is and also almost like a comedian type of, type of actor. Yeah, and Ryan Reynolds has been with this project from the beginning Not trying to, mention to get that it he off the ground. It. Yeah, he, he's, been, he's been a cheerleader for it and been sticking with it and trying to push it, trying to get it made. So that shows that he has investment in it. Right. And this will be his fourth comic book role. Really? Yeah, because he was in uh, Blade Trinity. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. And then he was Deadpool, and then he was Green Lantern. Now he's going to be Deadpool again. So this is his fourth try at comic books. So you would think that if you're doing it over and over again, you keep being in bad comic book movies, Mm -hmm. that you must actually want to be doing it. Right. Rather than somebody who's trying to jump on the bandwagon, especially since Blade Trinity was before the, you know, the whole... A uh, comic book movie really hit huge. Right. And so now, since we're kind of on the Marvel and DC type of thing, what are your recommendations for our viewers out there on DC or Marvel animated movies? Um, my favorite DC animated movie is uh, Justice League New Frontier which is the story of how the Justice League came together. It takes place in the 50s. And so they have all their retro retro costumes. Mm-hmm. And I just made you watch this one scene. Oh, Batman God. has one of the most badass lines in any of the movies. So awesome. He's talking to the Martian Manhunter, who yep. his um, weakness is he gets mesmerized by fire. And Batman's talking to him about... How he trusts him, but just in case, he has a $7 million sliver of kryptonite for the man in Metropolis to stop him. But all he needs to stop the Martian Manhunter is a penny for a book of matches. That was so awesome, man. The way that they made the Martian Manhunter look after he told them that. And then Batman just disappears out the window. I know, right? It's just like, don't mess with this guy, but you want him on your side from the get-go anyway. Yeah, and then there's a whole scene with... uh, Wonder Woman, where she's helped uh, prisoners of war, female prisoners of war in Korea, break out and kill all the men in the village. So she's yep. she's a bit more savage than you see her in any of the other versions. Yep. And I love the artwork and mm-hmm. the whole bringing the bringing the Justice League together for the first time. And then it ends with that amazing thing where Aquaman they beat the bad guy. And then Aquaman comes out of the water, and they don't know who he is, and he's just standing there like, and you don't know if from this point on he's going to be a villain or a hero if the story were to continue. And I I just love that ending. Um, Another one that I really like is, of course, the adaptation of of The Dark Knight Returns. Part one and two, I believe, right? Yeah, they made it in two parts, and they stayed very faithful to the books. And... You know, it, it, it's just a great Batman story, um, which the new B- Batman versus Superman is partially based on. So go watch the movie or read the book, whatever, if you yeah. want to get a little bit of education. 
Mm -hmm. And then Marvel, they tend to... I like their cartoon series, even though they're aimed more at... They're aimed more at children. Let's just be honest right there. The Marvel cartoons are aimed more at children, where the DC ones are for adults. Right. Um, but Marvel did do one that was pretty adult-oriented um, for a character that kids don't care about, which is Doctor Strange. You didn't hear that. They did a really good Doctor Strange adaptation, I thought, a few years back. Um, other than that, before the... Uh, Live action Iron Man came out. They did the Invincible Iron Man. Uh, I thought that was a pretty good story for the time because, like I said, this is before yeah. the Iron Man live action movie had come out, and Iron Man was always just a little rinky dink character. Mm. And this was the first time he got a nice treatment. You know, he got one in the 90s on the kids' TV show, but mm. uh, this was a more adult one. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, what are your favorites? Uh, well, mm. uh, we got trapped. It's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, before I fucking broke this chair, you broke the chair. Okay. <laughs> it's a garage. Just trap. don't break it anymore. Okay. Okay. So my favorite. Okay. My favorite DC animated movie is I recently just got into. It's called uh, Justice League: The Flashpoint Paradox, where basically. Flash runs so fast without realizing it that it, he goes back in time. It's kind of like a, um, what's the name of that movie? Uh, it's a Christmas movie. Back to the Future. Kind of thing where he kind uh, of discovers. Groundhog Day. Something like that um, where he kind I of. I don't know what Christmas movie. Gremlins. Gremlin, <laughs> Die Hard was a Christmas movie. Die uh, Hard uh, was a Christmas movie. Yeah. Rambo, um, the, fr the uh, First Blood was a Christmas. What, what Christmas movie are you? I have no idea what I'm talking about. Anyways, Scrooged? I'll probably, no, I'll probably I'll probably figure it out. Yeah, kind of like a Scrooge kind of thing where he goes back in time and he's just there. He's not the Flash, and without the Flash there, the Justice League ha has a whole different effect. Where, for example, there is this scene where the Flash meets up with Superman, not Superman, excuse me, where Batman's father, Thomas Wayne, becomes Batman. I repeat. Boost Rain's father becomes Batman. <laughs> and he uses and guns. And he uses guns. And Batman's mother becomes the Joker. And so anyways, Flash meets Thomas Wayne and he goes, I know your son Bruce. And by the way, freaking Thomas Wayne is a badass. He's saying he's beating up on Flash and he breaks his fingers and he says, I know, you, I know your son Bruce. I'm from the future. I'm from the future. And anyways, going forward... Uh, Thomas Wayne helps Flash gets gets back his powers. First time didn't work. He's all burnt up, and uh, second time it works, and he's Flash again. And there's this one scene where he is with uh, Thomas Wayne and uh, Cyborg, and Cyborg works for the government, by the way. And not in a good way either. Yeah, and they're trying to find Superman, but they find Superman in a red room. He's sitting in the corner. He's all skinny and all it got fragile and doesn't know anything. Because his ship crashed near this facility in you know, Metropolis in instead, this alternate universe. Instead of his parents finding him. And so, like I said, everything's altered. And so they rescue Superman. Superman gets freaked out and he flies away. And so they were hoping that Superman could be the hope on stopping this war, which is Aquaman and Wonder Woman that are fighting the war. They come up they together. Come they're, over. They're, they're lovers. Yeah, they're lovers. I, don't know. I ain't gonna get into that. There's so many things, but absolute. Well, I just wanted to make sure that you it, people didn't think that they were fighting war against each other. Well, they kind of, well, they kind of are, but in a way, they are lovers. But anyways, let's wrap it all up. One of my favorite scenes is when Flash comes back, and Thomas Wayne gives him a, a note for for Bruce, and so Flash gives Bruce his note. And he reads it, and he tells him that you know that he's proud of him, that he loves him. And one of the coolest things that Batman tells Flash, he goes, "You're one hell of a messenger." And before he reads, he takes off his mask, and you kind of see that he's tearing up a little bit, and kind of get into the emotional human side of Batman. So please go out and buy that, or even watch it online. I don't care, just watch it. It's 
And it also awesome. it also awesome. um, sets up nicely the reverse Flash, oh, which we yes. haven't gotten to see a lot yes. in uh, any DC animated movies. And it also lines up pretty good then introducing the Flash's mom mm -hmm. um, and reverse Flash, that whole relationship, which actually plays into it's very well done on the right. television series which you have not watched yet nope not yet it's very good and this one is based around barry allen oh right? yeah yep okay and as marvel goes i'm not too huge in the marvel i tried watching the invincible iron man it really didn't do it for me as you said marvel aims more towards children as dc is the opposite they go towards more of the adults okay all right so what's our next topic topic our commercial favorites. Oh. Yeah, we thought of this because we watched the Super Bowl a while ago, and the Super yep. Bowl is all about the commercials. Right. Especially when you don't like the game, you want it to end in a knife fight where neither team wins. Mm -hmm. um, Seahawks lost. What? So, yeah, we thought we'd talk about our all-time favorite commercials. And uh, my favorite one is... Uh, Lee Dungaree's jeans used to have this doll mascot that his name was Buddy Lee. And then they released a commercial that was a trailer for a fake movie, the Buddy Lee movie. And they had the actual voiceover trailer guy do the narration. And he's just like, starring Buddy Lee as Buddy Lee in Buddy Lee, Man of Action. And it was just so the, stupid that it always stuck with it. me. I, lo I love that. You have... Everybody, if you're producing a movie, hire this guy for the commercial. And, and it, was, it was just, um, and I practiced that movie guy voice with that line over and over again. Just because it, it was starring Buddy Lee as Buddy Lee in Buddy... The, I like repetition is what I'm saying. I think repetition is funny. Repetition's <laughs> funny. Repetition's funny. Um, and then the other one, which I don't know why... I like it so much because I, I, I kind of have a phobia of puppets. They, they give me panic attacks. Um, I can't watch Jeff Dunham. I have to change the channel. Uh, otherwise, I get a panic attack. But, you probably hate Ackman, don't you? Uh, uh, there, there, <laughs> there was um, this show on MTV called Undressed in the late 90s, early 2000s. And when they were first rolling it out, they had this commercial where an old man and a dragon puppet were sitting together on a bench talking about how if you get in a relationship with a friend, it can ruin your friendship. Very normal message. But at the end of the conversation, the dragon puppet turns to the old man and says, I'm glad we don't have sex. <laughs> and that was just so out of left field <laughs> and so disturbing oh, man. that that one's always stuck with me. Um, one of the more recent ones I liked was uh, Garmin, the uh, GPS. They had a commercial that looked like an old Godzilla movie um, or uh, Power Rangers or whatnot with a giant robot fighting a monster. Uh, so that one I kind of like just for the style. But these other yep. two have stuck with me for 17 years, yep. 15, 16 <clears throat> years, something like that. And... Uh, starring Buddy Lee. Um, so what? what's your all-time favorite commercials? Okay, well, first off, I'm just going to name off a recent one. It was by Snickers, and it was starring Danny Trujillo and the bass player from Airheads. I cannot remember his name for the life of me. He was in a ton of ads. Steve Sam Buscemi. Movies. Yep. And it's, it sets off, like I said, it's a Snickers commercial where it's setting up in a Brady Bunch thing, and this episode where Marsha gets hit in the nose or whatnot, mm. and they they you need you need to watch it. I can't help but laugh, but they're saying like, here Marsha, have a Snickers, and Dan Jr. is like, why? It's like you get a little angry when you when you when uh, when you're hungry, and you know they're biting it off, and they go, oh, you better, and Miss Marsha, you go better, and uh, Steve Buscemi, Buscemi, Buscemi is up there, and he goes. <laughs> he's like it's always all about Marsha it's never about Jan or something like that Marsha 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 and he walks off 
And one of my older favorite ones is, is a Doritos commercial. Guy's walking around with a bag of Doritos, and this kid's looking at it, and he wants his bag of Doritos, and he goes, Hey, so-and-so, come over here. I have a time machine. And the only way it works is if you insert your bag of burritos, I mean, uh, in your bag of Doritos. So you guy's sitting there in, a, in a, like a cardboard box that gets a time machine, dips his bag, bag of Doritos in there, kid grabs him, he leaves, and he thinks it's working. He's like, oh, my God. And he's working, and he gets out. And before that, this old man comes out, dressed exi- same as the kid, tells him, get off on my lawn. And the kid runs out with a bag of Doritos, and the guy comes out and looks over. The old man's sitting there, and he goes, Jimmy, you're so old. Now, that just made me hungry for um, Doritos. used to have Doritos 3Ds. Um, Doritos 3Ds? Yeah, and they were like um, like a Chex Mix kind of thing, only as a Dorito. <clears throat> and there was one that was cheddar jalapeno. That was so good. But they discontinued it. So. Uh, okay, what do we have next? All right. We are going to talk about the Grammys. Which I didn't watch. He brought me this story. I had Me neither. But what was so interesting about it is they didn't even show it on TV anyway, is the best heavy, best <coughs> metal performance. And... The runners-up were, I believe, Motorhead, Anthrax, Mastodon, and Tenacious D. And so Tenacious D won, and a bunch of metalheads who write blogs or videos or whatever that I've been seeing are going off saying how stupid it was for Tenacious D to win the Grammy. And by the way, Tenacious D is one of our favorite bands. You know, we that was one of the things that we related over, and that was Tenacious D. And... When I first saw it, they won it. I wasn't like all crazy, like, they won the Grammy! You know, just like, oh, cool. And they won the Grammy for a Dio cover. And it's pretty good. They covered The Last in Line. And it's on a tribute album. It's called um, This Is Your Life. Wendy Dio got all these famous artists like Metallica, um, Anthrax, and Corey Taylor from Slim not to record Dio songs. And so that's what Tenacious D won over. And that's one of the things that everybody got pissed off about. And they were going back to when Metallica got beat out by some dude who was... Jethro Tull. Yeah, he was, he was off the grid, and all of a sudden he won a Grammy for a song that he did, like, what, 10 or 20 years ago at the time. And to everybody who hates against the Grammys, you have to know that this is how they operate. They, they even nominated Jewish Priest for a live song that's over 30 years old now. You know what I mean? That's how they do it. And I read an article by a website called Metal Sucks. They did a full analysis. Again, that website is Metal Sucks. Go ahead, on, like them on Facebook or add them to your RSS feed, whatever. It's a great website. And I have the article here. I edited it up a little bit just for time's sake. And they, he goes over five steps. And the number one is the Grammys aren't meaningless. The Grammys are meant for advertising. And so that... That really hit home with me because I never really thought of it that way. And going on to the second step, he goes on to say that the Grammys are part of an industry's attempts to market itself and its wares, not a recognition of music achievements. And that goes into the Tenacious D situation may not land well with other people. Dio, it's time to go. Go. You must give your Captain Scepter to me. And smaller one for KG. Okay, anyways, but uh, we're gonna let's zero in in the clearest example of productive Grammy. Beck's win for the album of the year first set aside the thought of backlash voting, in which Academy members vote against megastars like Beyonce on principle. And for this discussion, let's just focus on what Beck's win accomplishes: sales. A win for Beyonce does impact sales of record of recorded music. Excuse me. As much as a win for Beck. That type will scratch their heads, opt in for this reportedly awesome Beck album, and open those walls. Basically what that means is they don't nominate music stars like Beyonce. And they're just going to give give it to this band called Beck just because they... Beck's a guy, not a band. Unless oh, it's, it's a guy? A, I thought it was... I don't, I don't know. And, uh-huh. Loser. I'm a loser, baby. So I don't... Right? That, that's... 
Beck, unless there's a new band called Beck. I have no idea. Um, but the, anyways. Uh, Jack Black was in a Beck video for sex crimes also. Oh, okay. Uh, Ooh. Anyways, so basically what this means, if anybody couldn't understand me or isn't following this, that just means that people are more likely going to buy... Award shows are full of crap. A- anyways, people are just going to buy this album from a band that they never heard of. No, but that's what it means, that award shows are full of crap. Okay, that too, but it just thinks they just think that people are just gonna buy an album from this band that are supposedly good enough to win a Grammy. And that leads into step three. Tenacious D represents the possibility of sales. And so think about this, John. If you were a normal cat who didn't listen to metal and you were happy to watch the Grammys and there was Motorhead, Anthrax, Mastodon, Tenacious D, oh I forgot to mention Slipknot, who would you buy who would you buy more? Would you would you choose Nasus D out of those guys, or who would you think? How old am I? Am I am I the same age I am now? Sure. Well, um, well, then I'd probably go by Kenny G or some shit if I wasn't into metal. I, I don't know what people who aren't into metal do, um, but Jack Black's a way bigger name um, than any of them. Uh, so if it's presented as you know Jack Black and Tenacious D or something right. like that, I can I can see how that's gonna. And so, they're bas- and so they're basically saying that Teenage D is most likely to generate money as far as I've seen, merchandise and downloads and whatnot. Again, this is a theme here. That's what the Grammys are all about. Which steps into step four. Business is business. The, o- the award only claims to single out the year's best, while its tangible result is to power sales. Like a light beer that claims blue ribbons, it's insidious marketing, it's American business, and no one is obligated to decode it, don't fall for it, and don't will a change for its nature. You can agree that no business will use their biggest stage to spread awareness for their niche product, even Mastodon, especially Anthrax, that's desired by a tiny but nosy customer base. If McDonald's launched a major campaign to trumpet the glory of their straws that are so popular with the local in, in, uh, indigenous <laughs> indigenous indigenous whatever nor would an industry's huge marquee even devote more than token acknowledgement to their tent poles they're no brainer blockbusters like Beyonce just as a big Oscar never lands on the mantle of Michael Bay instead they'll shepherd their potential growers to a resonant but pliable and huge audience they'll convey Beck's products to the uh, consciousness of demos that buy popular stuff that like to invest that investigate buzzy artists even the shoppers who purport to ignore big sellers as a matter of policy that not best metal or whatever is the honor now bestowed on tenacious d the nominee with the biggest potential to profit this industry of i'm glad we don't have that <laughs> me neither the industry of the desperate it makes perfect sense it's business so basically, it just says what I said before, whatever. A lot, and, of, a lot of words to say. That, that and it, number five, shut the hell up. There's no such thing as bad business. We're sitting here giving free publicity to fucking Beyonce, the band Beck, Tangent D, and all the other guys. Basically. Oh, the, sorry. I was just. Yeah, you, we're you basically said, free advertising. That's you, what we're you, doing. You said fucking Beyonce. So that's, that's where yeah. I went. <laughs> is that what you were thinking about? Uh, that's, that's all. That's all you ever do is in your dreams. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe Austin Powers era. Maybe. Beyonce. Eh, yeah. 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 I'm digging the afro. So yeah, basically that's what all the Grammys is. It's just about sales, and their basic way of thinking is that Tenacious D is way it has more potential to sell albums other than Anthrax and Motorhead. I said honestly, not. Like I said, uh, I. They're, they're they're meaningless anyway. I I just I don't. Not like uh, ghosts, where you say I don't believe in ghosts because you don't think they exist, but I don't I don't believe in uh, award shows because I, I not that they don't exist, but that I don't think they mean anything. Right. Um, right. The Oscars every year I could give a damn. I mm-hmm. mean, in nineteen I believe it was eighty seven, a movie came out called Die Hard, didn't win an Oscar. What's that movie, John? People watch that all the time. Do you know what won the Oscar that year for Best Picture? Nope. The Last Emperor. 
Yeah. It's a movie you've never seen, but it was the best picture that year. And the movie that we've all seen and watch over and over again doesn't get an Oscar. Yeah, it's the same thing with the Grammys. They're just putting out a movie out there thinking that people are going to go buy DVDs for and shit. That's all it is. They're all meaningless. All a Grammy and an Oscar are good for is a paperweight or a doorstopper. That's all, that's all so they're good for. So the point to take away is that life is meaningless. Right? Okay. So, do we have anything else to say? Nope. 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 Nope.